Hey, yo, yo, YouTube, what's going on? Welcome back to the Jonathan Hassinger Show. I, of course, am your host, John Hassinger. For this Out of Theater Reaction 2, Killers of the Flower Moon, directed by Martin Scorsese, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Lily Gladstone, Robert De Niro, Brendan Fraser, Jesse Plemons, and someone else I'm going to forget. But this movie clocked in at around three hours and 27 minutes. But I knew that. I was well aware of that going in. So mentally, I was prepared. I was ready. Um, for daily trailer reactions, if you guys could like and subscribe. I do out of theater reactions at least once a month. I think this is the 19th movie I've seen this year, so more than once a month. Um, so, first things first, the great Leonardo DiCaprio. He might not be in 40 seconds of this movie, and I'm not joking. He is in every blinking second of this movie, and he is the best at playing the character, and he does this in almost every movie. He plays this character who's kind of like thrown in somewhere new, and he doesn't know what's going on. He's kind of an idiot. And then he struggles for a little bit. Then he kind of masters something. Then it spirals out of control. And so if you don't know anything about this spoiler warning and if you don't know anything about the history of the Osage tribes tribe anyway so back in like the early 1900s the richest families in the world were still Native American because they still technically owned the land where lots of oil is was And it's interesting, it's kind of like Robert De Niro's character was kind of like Tywin Lannister in Game of Thrones where he's trying to marry into this Native American family. One of them that has like four daughters. So that's basically the whole plan is for De Niro to get his nephew, DiCaprio, to marry one of the daughters, Molly, Played by Lily Gladstone, who was just, I mean, she, she's got to get nominated for something. I mean, uh, uh, along with DiCaprio, if he's in it 99%, she's in it like 97.5. Both of them just unbelievable. John Lithgow was in it as well. However, when the money passes on to the kids, you know, like I said, there was like four daughters and I think a son maybe, or maybe like a husband. So there's a bunch of daughters, De Niro's plan, marry his nephew into their family and inherit all the money through their children. But in order for it not to get split, you know, six ways amongst all the kids, they systematically kill all of her sisters. And it, and it kind of comes to a climax when they take out the one sister and her husband, the husband who was married to a previous sister who died. So she died, he grieved with that other sister, married her, both of them were killed because De Niro thought he was trying to pull the same scam they were trying to pull. So they systematically kill everyone, kill all her sisters. Then the FBI, then she, Molly, dying of diabetes, taking insulin that is laced with heroin. What is going on here? Fire, just a crash. Seems like a lot for just a crash. Um, so yeah, dying of diabetes, drags herself to DC and comes up to the president is like they're murdering all the Osage Indians 
can you please send help, please? And she's, and he's like, thanks. And then Jesse Plemons shows up a couple weeks later. And he's, and it's in the trailer. He shows up at DiCaprio's front door and he's like, yeah, I was here about all those murders. DiCaprio's like, well, what, what about them? And Plemons is like, well, I want to see who's doing them. And he kind of like talks his way out of it. And eventually the FBI starts taking out all these people that De Niro and DiCaprio kind of like hired and used to kill off these sisters. But then all these guys that they get, they all keep pointing the finger to DiCaprio and to De Niro. And they get DiCaprio and they finally squeeze him. And they're like, you gotta testify against him and tell us everything. And Brendan Fraser, he has this great scene at the very beginning of the trial and before DiCaprio can start testifying, he interrupts and he's like, that's my client. I haven't spoken to him. And Lithgow, the other lawyer is like, this is outrageous. This is against the law. Like he can't be doing this. Eventually the, the judge is like, well, do you want to? And DiCaprio is like, all right, yeah, I'll talk to him. And they take him into a room with all the snooty white people and they tell him, you know, they beat you. Like Brendan Fraser has this great, I mean, he's, it's a great scene for him. He kind of chews it all up. And he's like, he's like, they beat you. They tortured you. And DiCaprio's like, no, they didn't. And he's like, yes, they did. They tortured you. And DiCaprio's like, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they tortured me. They made me lie. So then DiCaprio tells this to his wife. He's like, I'm not going to testify because they, they made me lie. So they arrest him. And they throw them both in jail. And then you get a shot of a child, their youngest daughter who's got whooping cough, dead. I almost left, I almost left the theater. And if there was like an exit where no one could have seen me leave, I would have, because it's just, I can't do it. I get stuck, you know, like I stop paying attention to the movie. So then Clemens, Jesse Clemens' character comes to DiCaprio in jail and is like, listen, uh, I was told one of your children had died. It's not, not the easiest thing to, this isn't the easiest thing to say. This is the hardest thing to say to somebody. Your child's dead and DiCaprio's like, which one? And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, oh, I think one had like a bad lung thing. And he's, he realizes it's the baby and he falls to the ground and DiCaprio is bawling. Like he is crying like he's never done in any of his movies. And I like just didn't want him to stop. Like I wanted him to just, realize like how bad he, he he's so controlled by this old fuck by De Niro but it does help him snap and they go to the funeral and him and his wife kind of have this exchange where they kind of look at each other and he's like yeah yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take him down and uh he, and he does then the movie takes the weirdest turn I've ever seen Scorsese take, but I feel like he really wanted to uh, satirize what he was doing and, and show everyone that he understands the irony of a white man telling this story by turning up it, it, turning it up even more to this like stage performance of like what normally would just show up on the screen. It would be a black screen with white letters kind of recapping what happens to everybody at the end of the movie but they do this like with sound effects and all these white people doing like different accents and kind of wrapping up where everyone uh ends and uh you know De Niro died in his 80s his character died in his 80s um uh D DiCaprio's uh character was eventually he was sentenced to jail for life but then pardoned and ended up dying with his brother in a trailer park. So, um, yeah, uh, the performances, De Niro, Gladstone, DiCaprio, Frazier's short one, uh, Jesse Plemons, John Lithgow and his small part, they just, they nailed it. And it's, uh, it's amazing to think this movie probably should have been longer. 
Like we probably should have seen all the stuff that they do, but I get why they did that and I, or why he did that. And I think that was just really interesting and kind of fun. And it didn't go on too long. I feel like that was the key to the ending. This, this complete format change uh, ending, it, it was maybe three minutes. So it wasn't like, okay, and it was neat. It was interesting. It was kind of cool. If you plan to see it, let me know when. If you've already seen it, let me know what you think. And if you have no plans to see it, let me know why. For daily trailer reactions and whenever I can, add a theater reactions. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next week.